Now we're going to talk about a waiting space, and there's a diversity of things that happen in a waiting room. Um, but we need to be able to accommodate for people from an acuity level, both mentally and physically. So think about the diversity of waiting that happens in one space. You know, this person has uh, had a family member who's had a heart attack, and this person has a person who's just getting a, a stitch in their finger. Whether I'm 95 years old or 5 years old, we want to create those opportunities for people to make selections of where they're going to wait. The first zone that we have is more of a semi-private type of zone that if someone who, let's say, whose dad just had a heart attack, we could go over to this and have a lot of family together in one area and really circle our family around so we have emotional support. But we don't want to have it a completely private area because we want to be able to have a clinician to be able to come over and give us reports and uh, be able to give us updates on dad if we needed to. The other area that's really a very unique and very popular uh, idea is a hospitality component to a waiting area. I call it the Starbucks experience because we like to incorporate booths. And if you think about it, when you're at a restaurant, what do you like to ask for? Table or booth? It's the same type of thing. People need choices. So for this, they're going to go to a booth because those dyadic conversations can happen. I might be able to plop down with my computer. I might be able to just have a cup of coffee there. I might be able to talk with a loved one or a family member or even a clinician that might be able to come over and have a conversation with me. So that Starbucks experience is really important. The other thing that's great about having a table or a booth within an environment and waiting is that if I am hungry and I'm going to be there for four or five hours, I don't want to go and sit down in the cafe because again that clinician might come out and give me an update on my loved one. The other thing that we need to do is really accommodate in a bariatric setting. So we have lots of different bariatric seating that we need to incorporate in one environment without it standing out like a giant sore thumb. I love using bariatric seating for um, pediatric areas because I call them parent child chairs. They're a little bit larger sit but we can accommodate a little one and a parent very easily and it doesn't disrupt the entire aesthetic of the space either. A pediatric area and a children's area is also very important in waiting. We don't want to forget the little ones. And often we are very stressed out as parents that come into an acute center and say, oh gosh, there's no place for my kid to go. Or it's that awful primary colored looking furniture in the corner. So what we're able to do at Nurture is offer solutions that really accommodate that child and in ways that are very whimsical, yet they're not um, necessarily specifically pediatric. So soft leaf ottomans, um, ripple benches that are very um, um, creative in design and they won't topple either for a child, but they're very inviting. The white magnet board that we also have with these magnetic creatures, it's very uh, inviting for a child to come and play and experience. So all of those are considerations in a waiting area.